Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. Come on, let's bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is healing in the name of Jesus. So much healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. Come on, let's bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name. Joy in the name of Jesus. So much joy in the name of Jesus. Joy in the name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is healing in the name of Jesus. So much healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus, there is no other name I know. Come on, let's bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. So much joy in the name of Jesus. So much joy in the name of Jesus. Joy in the name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. Hallelujah. God's got a blessing for you. God's got a blessing for you. Thank you. You can have it. Reach up and grab it. God's got a blessing for you. Yes, he does. God's got a blessing for you. I know that God's got a blessing for you. Yes, you can have it. Reach up and grab it. God's got a blessing for you. Every day, God's got a blessing for you. I believe it. Do you? God's got a blessing for you. Yes, you can have it. Reach up and grab it. God's got a blessing for you. He's got a blessing for you. He's got a blessing for you. Yes, he's got a blessing, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing. God's got a blessing for you. Believe it every day. God's got a blessing for you. God's got a blessing for you. You can have it. Reach up and grab it. You can have it. Reach up and grab it. You can have it. Reach up and grab it. God's got a blessing for you. Yes, he does. God's got a blessing for you. Believe it. God's got a blessing for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's got a blessing for you. God's got a blessing for you. You've already received a major blessing. We've already received a major blessing. God has allowed us to come through. Hallelujah. Another Christmas. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, another Christmas. He's blessed us. He's kept us. Amen. He's blessed us and he's kept us. Amen. And I'll say it again. He's blessed us and he's kept us. He's kept us wrapped in his arms. Amen. Safe in his arms, as the song would say. We're safe in his arms. And what a mighty God we serve. I know he's mighty in my life. He's mighty in your life. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. We are excited about being in the land of the living. Amen. The very breath that we breathe. The song says he is the air that we breathe. He is the air that we breathe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it amazing 
how God, even before the beginning of time, stepped out in nowhere on nothing and spoke everything into existence. He had faith in himself, praise God, to uh, so that we would have faith. Amen. He didn't ask us to have anything that he didn't have in himself. And I know that you have faith now. You're standing in a place of faith. Yes, you are standing in a place of faith because God has blessed us. It was just January. And look where we are now. It is December. Hallelujah. It's December, the 12th mile marker of this year. God has blessed us and kept us all the way through. And it's wonderful to be in the land of the living once again. Wonderful to be in the land of the living and wants to have ourselves, have, have our minds closed in the righteousness of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And we're so excited about Christmas, how God blessed us, amen, and allowed us to see another Christmas, amen, and our hearts, our hearts, our hearts, hearts of compassion go out, amen, as we begin to pray for those of us, uh, my family, our family, we've all suffered, praise God, loss, uh -huh, and we are making adjustments, we are making adjustments, one day at a time, just one day at a time. And we're thankful and grateful that God has blessed us. Hallelujah. God has blessed us and he's keeping us safe in his arms. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And the most exciting thing that we can be thankful and grateful about is a relationship with Jesus Christ being saved, being saved today. That's first and foremost. Hallelujah. So again, good morning, Greater Harvest, and good morning, Body of Christ. Jesus, joy to you. We're praying that you've had a wonderful time, a wonderful, wonderful time, amen, during this season of giving and receiving. More blessed to give than receive, but gifts are being changed, exchanged, and the greatest gift of all is the gift of our Lord and Savior into this world, and the greatest gift that we could give is Jesus' joy and his love. So we're excited today and we're so grateful and thankful, amen, for these seven days of Kwanzaa, amen. The second day, amen, that represents self-determination. This second day of Kwanzaa represents self-determination. And I believe, do believe that the Lord has blessed us today to be able to mm, evaluate or look into self-determination, look into a little bit of self-determination. So we're thankful and grateful that God that God has many colors, amen, many colors and many hues, amen, and he is a spirit, hallelujah, so really uh, the colors that we experience are the colors we see in our spiritual personalities, the colors that we see in the different flavors of his spirit, how God lives and moves in each and every one of us, and God told us something, he said, let the wheat and the tear grow together, and I'll do the separating when I come. Amen. And that's very important to where we are. So in this time, in this season, this season of giving and remembering that God, our father, gave the greatest gift, his son, Jesus Christ. This season, which is a season, amen, to immerse ourselves in the spirit of giving. Thank you, Jesus, which our nation, our world would be a better place if we all remembered to be givers, remembered to be givers and remembered to remember to be givers first and foremost. So we're thankful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We uh, lift our hands in the sanctuary. Praise God. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. Welcome again to all. So we're thankful, praise God, in all areas of our lives. As the song says, then the world would be a better place if we would all just remember. Amen. The world would be a better place. And speaking of a better place, I want to change to, I want, if I want change to take place, then I must be that change. Change to take place, I must change first. Amen. And I am, I'm a retired Marine and I was reading something on the internet, praise God, um, while in boot camp, the process of Marine Corps boot camp and all things uh, that we're told, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine. And when we heard it during those days and during those times, 
important. We thought that that was the craziest thing ever to say. But being that it was such a challenge, 13 weeks of redefining who you were by changing everything about you, amen, changing your sleeping habits, changing your eating habits, amen, changing the way that you thought, amen, every aspect of our lives, amen, was challenged. And if you had no foundation, praise God, for your life, then Marine Corps gave you one. And if you had a foundation, it was challenging. So bottom line, what was buried down on the inside of you was what would come out. And I thank God that's what the training was about. And that's what the training was designed to do. So using everything you brought with you, hallelujah, nothing was left out. So as I read, as I read on um, what the future plans were for the United States Marine Corps, I could not help but comparing that that I read with life and now being a part of the body of Christ. So I'm just going to kind of walk through this, praise God, and um, see what Christ has to say, see what the Spirit has to say to the church today. So uh, let me explain how this looked. It's military generals, they present plans, and most of the time these plans are boring. Uh, they really have no uh, real um, excitement to them, hallelujah, but it's usually the Commandant's Marine Corps planning and his guidance. So in providing an exception, amen, uh, something was crafted by one of the appointed generals, General David Berger, and it lays out a striking new vision for the Corps. And it abandons a sizable number of long-held Marine Corps articles of faith, along with General Berger's guidance in both hard-hitting and remarkably well-written. Hallelujah. So all the better for the document uh, meant to be widely dis distributed and wildly read. So um, it was troublesome. It was very troublesome like Senator John Lewis said many times, and he referred to it, uh, it's good, uh, good trouble. You talk about good trouble, uh, good trouble sometimes brings in change, praise God. Good trouble brings in change. So in many ways, the planning guidance responds to a growing turbulence that was inside of the Marine Corps and body of Christ. There's turbulence inside of our ranks as well. So since 2001, the Marine Corps had had to deal with some things. Um, so uh, the Marine Corps serves as the nation's land army in Afghanistan and in Iraq, and it's organized to respond to, to crisis. It has task force and it forges special operations components to it. So while still clinging tightly to historic mission, a large scale and amphibious landing. That means landing on the beach. You all have seen that. So these widely um, conflicting directions have led some Marines to question their own identity. And just like identity is being questioned everywhere during this place and during this time, the very identity of each and every one of us is being questioned. Hallelujah. So um, one uh, may even argue the fact that the service is suffering from multiple personality disorder, multiple personality disorder, which is something, wow, that sounds like the body of Christ. Uh, we're suffering multiple personality disorders. Uh -huh. Thinkers both inside and outside the core have called on senior leadership and as well as the body of Christ. We must look to our senior leadership. We must pray. And ultimately, we're looking to God for help. Amen. So the Marine Corps looks to their senior leadership to redefine its central purpose. Saints of God, I do believe that we need to stop with our own plans and follow God's redirected plans for the body of Christ. Yes, I do believe that God has some redirection for us and the Holy Spirit is administering to us for those changes. You see, do, do, through COVID-19, along with the civil unrest, are all factors, real factors, um, uh, making uh, factors for making adjustments, factors for 
doing things, factors for making major adjustment in our personal lives, major adjustment in our lives collectively. Hallelujah. And so we must look and deal with the loss of loved ones, unexpected loss, expected loss, expected or unexpected. When you lose a loved one, you never know how you're going to respond until it actually happens. So everyone in the nation and the world have been impacted by the circumstances of this unprecedented year, 2020. So I believe as the general was led to rewrite a new course for the United States Marine Corps, I also believe God wants to bring us back to the understanding that we must depend on him for everything. The new guidance responds to those concerns by creating a distinctively new course for the Marine Corps. And I believe through COVID-19, God is, he wants the spirit, he wants the spirit to hear, amen. Or he wants the church to hear what the spirit is saying as it relates to making some adjustments, making some redirection so that we can better, hallelujah, be equipped to advance the kingdom of God. So in the general plan, it clearly states what will not change. It will remain the nation's elite force in readiness. Body of Christ, we are the world's elite force in readiness. Saints of the Most High God, disciples of Christ, we are a force in readiness as it relates to spiritual warfare, and we must be intact, on point, as it relates to what we can do as individuals. So yet, it is remarkably candid about the aspects of his service that must change. Be newly devoted or be torn or thrown overboard. He will unquestionably face an uphill struggle in implementing this vision and confronting the many years that the Marine Corps has invested in counterintelligence and all the other conflicts and dealing with shrinking resources Hallelujah. Shrinking resources. As families, we have to deal with shrinking resources, and our resources are going to continue to shrink if we are not wise in well-doing and praying and looking and believing and trusting God that God is going to do it. Amen. We don't lean to our own understanding in this process, but we're clinging to God and his unchanging hands. So the Marine Corps is dealing with shrinking resources and entrenched bureaucratic interests in the Pentagon and defense industry. All those things are, are, are there and they must be dealt with. But if he succeeds, if the general succeeds, he will have boldly transformed the organization for, for the very real challenges of the future. And so Body of Christ coming out, we saw that 2020 had some challenges and still has some challenges. We're still working through challenges in all areas, whether it be mentally, emotionally, physically, economically, there are challenges everywhere, challenges everywhere. Uh, his vision, the general's vision, creates some challenges for other services in terms of roles and mission. And when I, man of God, when you, woman of God, when you began to boldly uh, uh, move into those things that the Spirit of God is leading you to change in your life, then things around you will begin to change also. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, what the general did, uh, the efforts to create equally, hallelujah, an equally foresighted future of guidance, you're looking at 245 years and one month. There's a change coming that will bring growth, encouragement, and another level of safety for our nation and raise the bar for all of the other services. So what's new for that Marine Corps? Well, see, the focus will be focused on naval operations like never before. Flag officers will uh, uh, be required to attend uh, naval courses. And what's happening is the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army, they will have to redo their plans. And their plans must be real. It just can't be something um, regurgitated and rehearsed from years ago. And saints, what happened, what we've done in the past, uh, we thank and we applaud what's 
than done. But there are some change that must take place. And the change begins in me. The change begins in you. Uh, Marines uh, should have more freedom to do their jobs. Jesus equipped his disciples to do their job. And they didn't even know that they were being trained. Uh, while we were in Marine Corps boot camp, we didn't know uh, that we were being trained and we didn't know how it would really affect Jesus and the, Jesus equipping and training his disciples. They really did not know how they would be affected. Uh, that training, that OJT training while viewing and watching Jesus and Jesus leading from the front, training them, be a leading from the front, training them in fasting and training them in praying, taking the time to be alone with God, spending time to be with God. Jesus walked, he moved, he lived, and he did all of that. And since the threat, hallelujah, since the threat environment will require increasingly distributed operations from all different services, you have to combine arms of operation to be pushed from different places uh, to focus on places that are necessary. So when we began to see the philosophy and the struts and the force that it takes to release subordinates to take a great deal of initiative to achieve their goal, amen. From Genesis to Revelation, it clearly states God's intent and his direction. We as leaders must allow the glory, the spirit of God to lead, guide, and direct all born-again believers to become leaders in their own home, leaders in their own job, leaders in their community. The Commandant's guidance therefore stresses doing everything possible to ensure that Marines focus on their war fighting instead of excessive number of administrative tasks, amen, like gathering data and basic uh, data entry and redundant processes. And body of Christ, we have been guilty of redundant processes. Matter of fact, we are still trying to use things that are outdated, praise God. The Holy Spirit has moved. Amen. And yet we are still in places believing God. Oh, it's good to hold on to the things from the past. And it's good to acknowledge, praise God, what God has done. But you know, in the banking world, you are only as you're, you're only as good as your last quarter. Your last quarter is over. You've got to start working in this quarter. And so the process, spiritual warfare is real. And our weapons are not natural weapons <laughs> that we have, but 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 our weapons are our spiritual weapons, and God equipped us to be able to be effective in our prayer lives. We must pray and pray effectively, earnestly, believing that God will do what He said He will do. So the marine culture is changing, hallelujah, but not enough. I believe God's calling us to change by being conscious of him in our everyday conflicts moving forward. Every believer has a responsibility to find out his course. How? By not forgetting to do what? Fear God, number one. Walk in his ways, number two. Love him with all your heart, number three. Man-made rules are not the norm, but God's normal is fearing him walking in his ways and loving him with all your heart. So the general's plan, praise God, is calling the armed forces, calling them to change. The army has to look, the air force has to look, the Navy has to look and special forces has to look. So this combined change for a better future for defense of the United States of America, as we gather, as we greater harvest and body of Christ, rapidly approach the conclusion to another, another scene, another place before the year. And we began to reflect upon personal and national woes. Let us take comfort in knowing we've been here before. There may be a new name for our con for our conflicts, they may be a new name for our afflictions. They may there may be a new name for our distresses, and there may be a new name for the despairs that we face. 
the name of the obstacles that we endure have changed. But as Ecclesiastics 1 and 9 reminds us, the thing that have been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. All human accomplishments will one day disappear. And we must keep this in mind in order to live wisely. If we don't, uh, we can become either proud, self-sufficient when we succeed, or sorely disappointed when we fail. Solomon's goal here was to show that earthly possession and accomplishments are ultimately futile. Hallelujah. Only pursuit of God brings real satisfaction. We should honor him in all we say, all we think, and all we do. Many people feel restless and dissatisfied, and they wonder if I am in God's will. Why am I so dissatisfied? What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of my life? When I look back on all, will I be happy with my accomplishments? Why do I feel burned out? Why do I feel so disillusioned? Why do I feel dry? Why do I feel like uh, I'm without hope or without purpose? What is to become of me? What is to become of me? What is to become of me? What will they say when I'm gone? Solomon tests our faith, amen, in Ecclesiastics, and he's challenging us to find true and lasting meaning in God alone. As you take a hard look at your life, as we take a hard look at our lives, as Solomon did, you'll see how important serving God really is. Over all other options, perhaps God is asking you to rethink your purpose and your direction in life. Hallelujah. So Solomon did. So in 2020, as Solomon did in Ecclesiastics, we should rethink, we should relook, we should reevaluate, we should dive into and really be truthful and have a real sit down with God. You know, the general rethinking 245 years and one month of tradition of the Marine Corps stood out to me. Against all odds, he moved into his purpose, redirecting the United States Marine Corps by doing so. It's redirection uh, for, for battle. It's redirection for the future of the National Defense Church. Through these times, as we come to the close of this year, let's reflect on our own lives as we know and as we know, each and every one of us who are still here on this earth, God's got something for us to do. As it relates to advancing the kingdom of God, God's got something for us to do. No matter what, you got to remember the fact that you have keys to the kingdom. To get through these times, we must do what we always have done, and that is to do God's will. Dr. King declared, Dr. King declared in the midst of of the wild times of the summer of 1968. He said, he said that he's seen the promised land and he just wants to do God's will. Despite all the adversarial things that were approaching him to fight, despite all the things that he had to fight through and press through, Dr. King looked for the promise of the spirit. And in Romans 8 and 4, it tells us that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. So do not let our afflictions, our distresses, our despairs, our burdens, don't allow these things to, to, to cause us to stop and faint. Do not let the difficulties of the day be a challenge. Let us not pursue the human nature that is to focus on what we see, but rest in the spirit. And that is to take comfort in what we believe. Roman 8 speaks to us in this wise. We must escape from bondage. And that's our subject for today. Let's escape from the bondage of 2020 and leap 
into 2021 with Jesus. Let's escape from the bondage of 2020 and leap into 2021 with Jesus. And Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as a personal Lord and Savior. Believe in him as our personal Lord and Savior. There is no condemnation. Don't allow people to encompass you and force you down and put you in boxes and speak things into your life. Amen. Don't give people that type of access. Uh, verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being. Any man to be in Christ is a new creature, and there's a newness that God wants us to walk into every day. Hallelujah. God has set us free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, that is to overcome sin and remove its penalty, its power, being awakened by the flesh, man's nature without the Holy Spirit, God did it for us. He sent his son Jesus in the likeness of a sinful man, hallelujah, as an offering for sin. And he condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned it. He subdued it and overcame it in the person of his own son. So that what? So that the righteousness and the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not live our lives in the ways of the flesh, but are guided, amen, guided, amen, by worldliness and our sinful nature, but live our lives in the ways of the spirit, guided by his power. And saints of the most high God, it is his power. It's the power of Jesus Christ working in us, the power of Jesus Christ moving in us. And for those who are living according to the flesh, to set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body. For those who are living according to the spirit, and you must be spirit led, amen, to escape from the things that happened in 2020 and to take that leap into 2021 with Jesus, amen. We must be led of the spirit. Hallelujah. And we must be living according to the spirit. So we must set our minds on the things of the spirit, his will and his purpose, God's will and his purpose. And if we pray, God will redefine for us every day. And there's something, there's something. We got to forget those things which were behind and we got to press forward towards that higher calling in Christ Jesus. We must not allow the failures of the past. And they're not failures, praise God. They're not failures because if when you learn a lesson from what's going on in your life, amen, and allow God to remove the scales from your eyes, you'll see that prosperous future and the experience that you had from what the world calls failure, what God calls maturity what God calls an excellence of the spirit, moving in him, a being mature, being perfected because of the things that has happened. So how do we take that leap? Because everything that happened to us in 2020 causes us to be perfected. And perfected means to mature, mature to make better choices today than I made on yesterday. So we can now, now, the mind of the flesh is death. When we began to think about failures, we began to think and look at things that way. It's death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it. And soon as we realize, amen, and conceptualize the fact that all this is because God did it, and it was nothing that I'd done, but it's the grace of God working in our lives, and we experience grace, amen, second generation grace, third generation grace. What I'm saying is that the grace that's expended to us through Jesus Christ, but somebody prayed for me, somebody prayed for you, somebody prayed for us and had us on their mind took the time and prayed for us. 
And yes, we must continue to pray. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. So we must continue to work in that vein. The spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever, amen, rests on what I do today. So let's take that leap out of 2020 into 2021 with Jesus. The mind of the flesh, let's talk about the mind of the flesh, with its sinful pursuits is actively hostile to God. So, and Paul said it another way in Romans chapter seven. He says, we are, there's a war going on in my members. Even the good things that I wanted to do, I did not do. The things that I know I should not be doing, that's what I did. Paul Samiza say there's a war going on in our members. And here in Romans 8 and 7, the mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits is actively hostile to God. So there is a fight to the finish, praise God. But you must make a choice. You must willfully and intentionally make a choice. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. Our human nature will not submit. Only the spirit of God in us could make this human nature subject. And that only happens, praise God, when we feed our, God, I'm no shaki When we feed our spirit, amen, uh, the word of God, that the word of God penetrate our hearts. Uh-huh. The mind of the flesh, which is sinful, pursuits is hostile to God. But those who are in the flesh, living a life, catering to sinful appetites and impulses cannot please God. So we have to take a real good hard look in where you are, who you are, what you are doing, and how you're making choices. Because the very place that you're in today and the things that we experienced in 2020, some of it were our choices, some of it was just being persecuted for righteousness sakes, and it really doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Because look where God has brought us from. Look where we are at today. Hallelujah. However, you are not living in the flesh, controlled by sinful nature, but in the spirit. That's what we, that's where we should live in the spirit. Hallelujah. In the fact that the spirit of God lives in you, lives in me, directing and guiding you, directing and guiding me. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. Mm -hmm. If Christ lives in you, hallelujah, though your natural body is dead, because of sin, your spirit is alive because of the righteousness which God provides. And God provides that life. God provides that hope. God provides that joy through the righteousness which he provides through the spirit of God. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies, amen, through his spirit who lives in you, who lives in me. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, amen, an obligation, but not of our flesh, of our human nature, of our worldliness, of our sinful capacity to live according to the impulses of the flesh, our nature without the Holy Spirit, We cannot do that, amen, without the Holy Spirit. So, for if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you're going to die. We're going to die if we're here and there and moving here and there and doing this and that. But if you are living, if I am living by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, we are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of this body, you will really live forever. And that's what we're talking about. And Jesus said, I'm, I, I come to bring life. I come to give life. And I come to do it more abundantly right now. And so the peace that we move in and out of sometimes, it's because of a oneness in Christ Jesus. It's because of submitting our ways to him. For all who are allowing themselves 
to be led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery. Amen. Even though we were uh, put in natural slavery years ago, hallelujah, but we've not received that spirit. When we receive the true, hallelujah, revelation of who God is in our lives, that spirit of slavery is gone. So you and I, we've not received the spirit of slavery, leading again to fear. Hallelujah. Remember a few weeks ago, we said fear is a factor, but fear is not a factor that motivates our lives. We realize that Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. Not only for us, but for America today. So lead it again to fear. Hallelujah. And we are not in fear of the judgment of God, but we're in fear and reverencing who God is in our lives. So daily we acknowledge and give him the first fruit of our day every day. I'm so excited. Great Harvest at 6 a.m. We are in prayer. It's a prayer opening and a putting on the whole armor of God and coming before him, giving back the very best, the first fruits of our day every day. Hallelujah. And so when we do that, amen, and not only then, but then being able to walk through it, yes, we receive the spirit of the adoption as sons of God, the spirit producing sonship by which we joyfully cry, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, I have a father. That's like singing, uh, come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. The spirit himself began to testify, hallelujah, and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we, the believers, are children of God. You are a child of God. Nobody can dispute it. They can, or people can dispute it, but you have to live it. Even though it's a challenge, you have to hang in there. And if we are his, if we're God's children, then we are his heirs and also heirs to God and fellow heirs with Christ Jesus, sharing his spiritual blessings and all of his inheritance. If indeed we share in his suffering so that we may also share in his glory. Thank you, Jesus. For I consider, hallelujah, from the standpoint of faith, that the suffering of this present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us, hallelujah, and in us. That's why, just want to put in your thought process today, let us escape from bondage of 2020 and leap into 2021 with Jesus, a leap of faith. Uh -huh. For even the whole creation, all nature waits eagerly for the children of God to be revealed. That's right, saints. You must walk in the newness of life where God has called you to walk. It's hard, but day by day, it will get easier. And the more that we work at it, the more that you work at it, it will become first nature. Hallelujah. For the creation was subjected to frustration. Hallelujah. And futility, not willingly, but because of some intentional fault on its part. It, it wasn't that, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope, that creation itself will also be freed from its bondage. Thank you, Jesus. Freed from its bondage. Freed from its bondage. So let's escape from the bondage of 2020, the things that held you back, praise God, you've escaped. Just take a quick glance over your life and see how God has brought you, how God has taught you, how God has moved on your behalf, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope. Thank you, Jesus. That creation itself will also be freed from the bondage, freed from its bondage, hallelujah, and gain entrance into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been mourning together as the pains uh, of childbirth until now. So we look at 2020, the whole entire globe, amen, creation and all that's in it, some way, shape, fashion began to suffer. Not only this, but we too, 
who have the first fruit of the spirit, a joyful indication of the blessings to come. We must experience the joy daily that we know and we must be assured that the joy is coming. Even we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the sign of our adoption as sons of God, son, the redemption, the transformation of our body at the resurrection. Yes, we do know that's coming, but there is some joy that God has for us right here. For in this hope, we're saved by faith, but hope, the subject of which is seen, is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? Nobody has to do that. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait eagerly for it with patience and composure. Patience and composure. Even though I'm being afflicted, I'm composed in it because my hope is in what I do not see. My hope is in Jesus. Even though I'm experiencing distresses on every hand, I'm composed as yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Even though I'm experiencing despair, I yet gonna hold on to my faith. Even though I'm facing disappointments, amen, I'm composed because I'm holding on to my faith. And my victory, my victory, your victory, our victory is in Christ Jesus. In the same way the spirit comes to us, hallelujah, and helps, he helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what prayer to pray sometime, what to offer to God, or how to offer it as we should. But the spirit himself knows our need and at the right time, at the right time, the spirit intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings, hallelujah, too deep for even words. And that's where the realness of Christ comes, amen. The realness of being transparent before Christ when we cry out to him, crying out, Abba, Father. And we know with great confidence, yes, we know, meaning we're confident. We are, and, and the confidence comes because we're conscious that God, who is deeply concerned about us, yes, God's deeply concerned about us. He causes things to work together as a plan for our good. And yes, when we look back over 2020, we have got to break the bound and the chains that would try and hold us because we see that God had a plan for us. We didn't know walking in it, walking through it, but we could stand today. And I'll say it again, take a quick glance over our shoulders and see the plan for God and see the plan that God was working on in our lives for good. Amen. For the good, for the good of those who love. I'm going to question you. Do you love him today? And if you love him today, God is looking after your good and he wants you to experience the greatness of his love hallelujah and those who are called but you've got to know and be conscious that you're called by god and because you're called by god everything is a ha is happening according to his plans for your life that's right his plans for your life and purpose so let's escape from those things that are trying to hold us back in 2020. And let's take this leap of faith into 2021. Let's not just leap anywhere. Just Let's not just leap with anything, but just take that leap with Jesus. Hallelujah. Leap with Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in you and through you. And in this season of giving, amen, where your hearts were saturated with joy, let's keep that spirit of giving, amen. Let's keep that spirit of serving others because when you serve others, somebody will serve you, amen. Let's be focused on serving each other as the body of Christ. And when we go body of Christ uh, beyond denominational uh, guidelines and things that human beings would cause and make up and put up into place, praise God, we will know, amen, that we're fulfilling God's purpose. Because the scripture goes on to say, for those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, 
That's right. I'm reminding you that you were chosen beforehand. Amen. Before we were even here, amen, Christ died for us. So we are chosen. You've got to realize that you are God's choice for today. Hallelujah. Because, amen, breath, you're breathing, a breath of life. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. He loved and he chose beforehand. And he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately, praise God, share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved, and honored among believers. Saints of the Most High God, if we were to have a jersey, and I do believe in my imagination, we all have jerseys. I've said it before. I'm going to continue to say it. We're all on the same team in the body of Christ. We all have positions to play, and each and every one of us, God has so ordained and designed that there is a number. Amen. And all of us can wear a number one and Jesus, and those whom he predestined, he also called. Yes, there's a call on your life. Every day that the sun comes up, God is calling you to come up higher. And those whom he has called, he's also justified. And he declared free of the guilt of sin. So don't allow guilt to overwhelm you. Don't allow anybody to push guilt on you. Amen. But continue to walk in the newness of life. The spirit of God convicts us where we are sorrowful, sorrowfully saddened because we've disappointed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Believe it or not, our children are saddened when they can see the disappointment that we have in them because we know as parents that they could do better. Saints to the most high God, you're declared free of the guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Amen. Raising us, raising them to a heavenly dignity. And there is dignity that we must walk in because we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So there's a walk that we have. And we're walking by faith and not by sight. We believe and trust in God every step of the way. Amen. What then shall we say to all these things? If God Hallelujah. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be successful against us? No one can be successful against us when we are constantly reminded that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. Hallelujah. But mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. So when you call out and you submit yourself in prayer, you're pulling down strongholds. And the first strongholds that must be pulled down are strongholds in our own lives. We must humbly submit ourselves and, and have the affirmation of our faith constantly. And God confirms himself in us on a daily basis. If you give ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church every day, you'll see God in your life. You'll see the favor of God in your life. And blessings will always overtake you and go before you. The scripture goes on to say in 830p, uh, he who did not spare, God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Who will or how will he not also along with him gloriously give us all things? God is going to give us all things. Who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen one? It's God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in the right relationship with himself. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died. Amen. So he paid the penalty for each and every one of us. And more than that, who was raised from the dead? Hallelujah. And who is at the right hand of God interceding? Hallelujah. With the Father for me, with the Father for you. So who shall or what shall, who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation of 2020 do it? No. Will the distresses of 2020 do it? Or will the persecution of 2020 do it? Or will the famine of 2020 do it? The nakedness, will it do it? Or danger, will it do it? Or the sword, will it do it? No. Hallelujah. Let's escape from bondage of 2020 and leap into the 2020 
2021 with Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, just as it is written and forever remains written in the Bible. Hallelujah. For your sake, we are put to death all day long. This sinful nature is put to death. This human nature that always wants to rise up and take first base, we are regarded as sheep for the slaughter in that wise. But yet in all things, we are more than conquerors. You're more than a conqueror today. So when you look back on January, praise God, and look now we're standing in December, you're more than a conqueror today. And gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us, Amen. He loved us, praise God, and he loved us so much that he died for us. Yes, Jesus died for you. He died for me. So, for I am, I'm convinced now, and I continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things seen, hallelujah, nor things present and <laughs> threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited, unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So let's escape from the bondage of 2020 and let's leap into 2021 with Jesus. No more fear. We fear God. We do not allow fear to paralyze us. Amen. There is no doubt, hallelujah, of who we are in Christ Jesus. There's no despair, amen, about who we are in Christ Jesus. Even though those things are real, uh, uh, Christ died for us and he's still interceding on our behalf. He's still there. Hallelujah. Many of us, many, we've lost many, many have died, but you're still here. I'm still here. There's been many disappointments, but we're all still here. Nobody knows, hallelujah, how this 2020 affected you, affected me, but it's time to escape. And as long as we can continue to communicate to God, sit down and be transparent with him, he is our deliverer. He is our shield. He is our buckler. He is our everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is providing us an open door for 2021. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. You have kingdom keys. I have kingdom keys. We all have access to the kingdom. We must choose, amen, to escape from the bondage of the past. It's time for the great escape. The great escape as we pray in these last days of 2020. It's time for the great escape into 2021. Let's go believing. Let's go praising. Let's go. Let's enter the gates of thanksgiving. Let's enter the gates of praise in 2021. Amen. With thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And enter the courts of 2021 with praise, knowing that the Lord our God is good. The Lord our God is great. It's leaping time. It's praising time. Let's escape from the bondage of 2020 and take this leap of faith with Jesus Christ. Take a leap of faith. I've got joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. Joy everlasting. Joy that the world had not given. The world cannot give. Joy, 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 unspeakable joy. I'm thankful and grateful for where God has brought us from. Body of Christ we have to make some adjustments. Praise God. Let's be redirected by the Holy Ghost. Let's move. Let's walk by faith continually. Hallelujah. And not by sight. Let's understand that God is in us to will and do of his good pleasure in our lives. And let us leap. Hallelujah. Let us leap. Hallelujah. Let us leap. Hallelujah. With Jesus. Let us jump for joy. Let us shout for glory. Hallelujah. As we continue to believe and trust God day by day. This is 2020, but God is still with us in 2021. Remember, God told us that whatever we do while we're in this season, whatever we're doing in these last days, praise God, that's how we're going to enter in. So let's enter in with great joy. Let us enter in with the peace of God. Let us enter in with understanding. Let us enter in knowing 
that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. So let us escape from the bondage of 2020 and leap into 2021 with Jesus. God bless you, Jesus. Joy encompasses us, amen, in our Jesus joy, thanksgiving season, believing and trusting God, not being overwhelmed by this or that, but trusting God all the way, standing on his principles, amen, always believing and receiving and understand that Jesus is real. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus Christ is the way. And all we have to do is continue to look to the hills who have come at our help and know that all our helps come from God. Pray with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew the right spirit which is in us. Amen. We believe in Jesus Christ, your son, who died for us on Calvary's cross. And Father, we thank you that none will be lost. God, we're reaching out to you with all that we have. We're reaching up, God. With holy hands, we surrender. We're le reaching up, God, asking you to encourage us all the more. We're reaching up, God, believing and trusting in you, leaning not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledging you. And we thank you, Father God, for we're escaping from the bondage, amen, of 2020, hallelujah, and leaping and rejoicing, hallelujah, with Jesus in 2021. Thank you, Father, for this day. Continue to heal, continue to deliver, continue to set us free. We thank you for the many miracles, amen, that you have brought, the many miracles that manifested within our very midst, and we're in constant prayer for every member of Greater Harvest, every member of the body of Christ. And we're speaking signs, wonders, and miracles in our lives. The miracle, wonder, working power of the word of God. That's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Let's continue to walk with God day by day. God bless you. We're so thankful for the time that you spent we're thankful for the choice that you made today to be with us. God bless you, Greater Harvest. We love you. God bless you, Body of Christ. We love you. And God bless the United States of America. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we will allow Christ to arise and let the enemy be scattered. God bless you this wonderful day. Continue to go in grace. Have a wonderful time. Blessings to you.